can feel the peace and you can feel, amen, glory to God. The calmness that God has brought to your spirit. Yeah. It's so important that when the spirit of the Lord is present, that we flow with it. Yeah. Amen. That we don't try to work against it. But we let God do what he wants to do. Because uh, 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 contrary to what we have been taught down through the years, God does his most work in the midst of crisis. He does his best work. Amen. Glory to God. When nobody's yelling and screaming and laying hands on you and all of you down. But you are uh, fellowshipping, communing, something with the Lord in a setting like this. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Where your mind is stayed on Him, your heart is focused on Him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then He can come in. in. Amen. Glory to God. And He can just individually touch you, heal you. Sure. By the time you get up and you walk through the door, the work would already be done. Amen. And it wouldn't have been a whole bunch of hoopla because, see, we have been taught down through the years that we got to do a lot of hoopla stuff. We ain't doing no hoopla stuff. Glory to God. We let the Spirit of the Lord do what He wants to do. And we need a hoopla to the hoopla. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But if you will keep your mind stayed upon Him, even while we journey through the message that God has given me. I guarantee you, if you follow the instructions that has been given you thus far, that you will feel a difference when yeah. you get ready to leave this place. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. So I'm going to talk to you from the book of Isaiah. Amen. Glory to God. I think Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, and we're going to focus on verse 2 of that chapter. It's familiar. And we quote it all the time, glory to God, but we're going to talk a little bit. And I probably have preached on it before, but sometimes it's good, amen, to go back and remind you, amen. And it's so simple, you know, it's God's assurance, his promise, his, 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 his reassurance to us once again. He said, when you pass through the water, glory to God. And that right there, you can really stop right there because, see, I don't like passing through water. I, you know, I don't want water higher than what I can breathe. Amen, glory to God. But he said, when you pass through the waters, anybody know the waters? Anybody got the waters in the heart? Glory to God. Any water things going on with you, amen. He said, I will be with you. I will be with you, amen. And through, he said, through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. That when you walk through the fire, see, these are major elements that are on the earth, amen, glory to God. He said, when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned or scorched. Nor will the flames kinder upon you, amen. So he's saying, you know, that the elements of this life, the elements of this world, amen, is not going to overtake you. And even though you think that some of the things that you go through, amen, is going to kill you, that some of the things that you go through, amen, glory, this is the last bra, that some of the things that you go through, amen, this is the way we say something that, 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 something that broke the camel back. You know, we got all kinds of sayings that we say, amen. But this scripture right here, my God, my God, it tells you no straw, no situation, no illness, no circumstance, glory to God, is going to befall you because God is going to be there with you and he's going to make sure that this life journey, amen, is going to be successful in him because he's going to be with you all the way. Now, I know when we're crying and I'm coughing over our fish sandwiches, amen, glory to God, we thank God is not there. And sometimes we even say, God, are you with me? Glory to God, he has made it clear to you that I'm with you, Lord, even until the end of the earth. And so what I want to talk to you about this morning, amen, is that grow, you got to grow through what you're going through. Did you hear what I said? You got to grow through what you're going through. Amen, glory to God. So many of us say, man, we can't go through nothing without giving up. Now, I know, I know, because I've been through some things. I done gave up five, six times while I was still in it. Glory to God, I done gave up some things, amen, while I stayed in it. But I, in my mind, you know, see, your mind is your worst enemy. In my mind, I gave up, amen, glory to God. But I realized that I had to grow through what I was going through. And if you will grab hold of this, if you will realize that, I, that, that uh, Isaiah 43 and 2 is for you, if you will realize, amen, that what your water is. See, your water may not be like my water. Your fire may not be like my fire. But he said, whatever, and these elements are here, the fire or water, because they are earth things. You understand what I'm saying? So he's letting you know that whatever your water, your river, your fire, glory to God is, that it's not going to consume you. 
but you got to grow through what you're going through. Are y'all listening? It's important. I'm going to take my time. I'm trying not to preach at you. So when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Before God, amen, changes our circumstances, people of God, he often uses the circumstance to change us. Before he will change it, and see, this is where we get messed up because we get mad at God. We got upset and then glory to God. We throw in the towel because we feel like God should change the situation. But if you will start changing, then he will start changing the situation. Do you hear what I'm saying? And then God allows things to come into our lives, amen, glory to God, so that he can change us. Amen. Yes. Right, listen, you will never change if you didn't have situations and circumstances to come up. To show you certain things, reveal certain things to you, open up certain things to you, you will never make change. You will always be the same because a lot of us are very relaxed in where we are. We are very laid back in the condition that we're in. We are very laid back in the matter of a lifestyle that we have created for ourselves. So what God does, he disturbs that. He brings, amen, a lot of situations and circumstances to come in to disturb the kickback attitude. You know what I mean, Brother Maurice, and then to disturb the kickback understanding of how we understand things. You know, and then some of us have to learn to get upset when, amen, when God, amen, disturbs our peace. But his purpose for disturbing your peace is so that you can grow. Amen. So that you can change. We want to change. How many people want to change? Amen. So before God will change your circumstances, whatever your circumstance may be today, he will often use this circumstance to change you. Yes, he has um, promised to deliver us from our troubles, but not necessarily on our schedule or on our time frame or in the way that we think that he should. Amen. You see, God's um, thoughts towards us isn't just to deliver us from our troubles. God's thoughts towards us is not just to deliver us from our troubles. His ultimate desire is to deliver us from us. His ultimate desire, are you listening to me, amen? His ultimate desire is to deliver us and to develop us into his life. That's what he's doing. So from the time that we uh, are born into this world, God wants his hand in it. God wants to be a part of it. God wants a man to steer it. God wants to direct it. God, you know, and if we follow God, we wouldn't have so many errors and we wouldn't have so many mistakes and we wouldn't have so many things. But because our desire is just much stronger than God's desire, we often go with what we desire. And when we go with what we desire, we end up in a dilemma. We end up in trouble. We end up in water. We end up in fire. Come on, we end up in rivers, glory to God, that God never intended for us to be in, glory to God. But because your desire was stronger than his desire for yourself, amen, glory to God, he had to now send out a life jacket or life something to, to, to deliver you from, amen, the trouble that you got yourself in. But he'll let you stay out there a little bit and tread water. He'll let you stay out there a little bit, glory to God, hallelujah, and tread the water until you say, Lord, I ain't going to never do this again. Anybody ever done that? <laughs> you ain't got to find me here no more. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's what that is all about. And we come out, amen, glory to God, and we realize that it had not been for the Lord on our side. We come out, glory to God, realizing it was God that saved me. We come out realizing, amen, glory to God, God had to put his hand in that thing. That thing would ultimately consume me. We realize, amen, glory to God, that when the water my God, I wish I could get my scripture. We realize, glory to God, hallelujah, that when the water tried to overtake us, amen, it was the hand of God that reached out and touched us. It was the hand of God that tricked you. You ain't come out on your own. I know you thank glory to God that you brought yourself out, but tell somebody, I didn't bring myself out. You didn't bring yourself out. Yes. No matter, amen, how much credit you give yourself for getting yourself the way you are right now. My it was you. I, I, glory to God. I, I said it was not you. I, it was the Lord God Almighty, amen, that looked at your circumstance and decided for a moment, my God, my God, I'll lift you up. Don't mean you won't go back, but I'll lift you up and give you reason for a while. Amen. Because his ultimate goal is to bring me to the place where he desires to be. 
Y'all are the kindest people I ever met. You cry about everything. Glory to God. When God is trying to bless you, you need to cry. That's why get me out of this. He's trying to bring you, amen, higher heights and deeper depths, amen. And you cry, Lord, if you can just deliver me. He don't want to just deliver you, but he wants to change you. My God. Yeah, he has to change you so you can reign with him. See, the change has to come so you can spend heaven with him. So that you, amen, glory to God, can make heaven your home. If you never get change, uh, you will not see heaven as your home. But in Christ, the love, the trouble I see. We make songs, amen. Ain't nothing like the trouble I see. Well, you ain't seen no trouble because if God was to open up that river, if he was to open up that water, if he was allowed me to really see that flame, my, my God, my God, then will you realize that God is a saving grace? Because even when you go through, you never get all that was intended for you. That's right. Are you listening? Are you listening? Because if God put back his hand and showed you really what was designed without his hand being in it, you would already be finished. Amen. It's the hand of God that guilt certain things from coming to your life. Amen. Look up and see Jesus. Look up and see Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he's there because he promised to deliver you. He's there. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, not on your schedule, but he's there. Amen. Glory to God. Because he wants to develop you. Uh, he has a better plan than you know. Uh, he has a better plan for your life. I know he just want a plan to get you a house and a good job. You want a plan, amen, to get you a good car. You want a plan to be able to eat steak every day. But God got a better plan in your house and your car and your state. He has an internal plan. Amen. That internal plan is going to require you to go through what you got to go through. Amen. And that you grow through what you got to grow through. Amen. And that you allow him to be Lord in the midst of it. You got to stop being such a chicken. You got to stop being so scared. Some of y'all are scared of everything. You're scared to go outside. You're scared to go on the mountain. You're scared to drive a car. Come on, you scared cats. You got to stop being so scared about everything. If this scripture is true, then what are you afraid of? When he said, I will be with you. I will be with you. He has a better plan for you. He wants to develop you and me. He, amen, into the fullness of what the God potential that he knows, amen, that is in us. God uses the word water or river, amen, or even fire as a virtual insight into the trouble that we face, amen. Not only does God promise to go through the desert with us, he also promised, amen, victory after we have come through our challenging times. You don't want to be challenged because you want to be relaxed and dying. Anybody who's relaxed and dying, don't get to go to see the ultimate. Because see, you can't be relaxed and dying. If you don't like change, then you can't see the ultimate outcome of what God really wants for you, or what God has for you, amen, glory to God. So amen, after the hard times, people of God, after you've gone, gone through what you're going through, amen, glory to God, then you begin to come to a place of victory and strength that is untold. You begin, amen, to gain momentum and power and authority and anointing, glory to God. These things then start to come, amen, and encompass your life. They start to come and be a part of who you are and who God intended for you to be. Then you can get others say, then you can speak a word to other people. Then, amen, you can tell the testimony. Then you can tell people, yeah, when I was going through that water, when I was passing through that fire, the Lord was with me, and this is what he did. And now look at me. I'm a living testimony because I grew through where I was going through. Yes. My God. Yes. When you start out with anything, Young people, when you started going to school, when you had to meet your mom, mama house and go to college, you were afraid, but you had to go through what you was going through. You, a man, was stepping out into life untold, unknown. Glory to God, couldn't eat mama's food no more, had to eat cafeteria food. Amen, glory to God, didn't have mama pick you up and drop you off anymore, had to hitch a ride. 
Come on, y'all need to talk That's to right. the Lord God. All these things was uncertain. All these things was new. All these things was a part of your growth. All these things was a part of your maturity. Yeah. But some of you have made your life. He have made you a nicer neck like the eagle does. Amen. You put cushion in something. And, and you didn't get back. Some of y'all didn't get back ready to die. Some of you to get back wow. ready to go on now and your work ain't done. Some of you to get back and say, I ain't gonna do nothing else. I'm just gonna stay right here and just do your stuff. Well, baby doll, you don't wanna do that. And then you want to grow through what you're going through so that you can present him with some kind of good works when he comes back. Amen. Enough to make you want to shout. You don't want to shout. I shout. Yeah. Glory to God. Because I know my life would not be the way that it is if I had not gone through what I was going through. Hasn't been a matter of roses, amen. Everything that could come up against me has come up, amen. But, and still coming up, and don't stop, amen, because you grew through. Amen. You just meet up with something else that you're more powerful and more anointed now to deal with as these things don't bother you like they used to because you have gained momentum in growing through what you're going through. Amen. And so the old trick that the devil used to pull, you don't work no more. Because I remember when the devil came down on this ministry, when the devil came down through you to attack me, and I used to have pain and heartache and disappointment. But you can do what you want to do now. Glory to God, and it don't touch me. But it don't mean that you ain't going to deal with it when God finishes with you. Uh -huh. So I've grown to what I had to go through. Don't mean I ain't got some other stuff I got to go through. But me, I'm more equipped. I'm more equipped to smile because I went through what I had to go through the right way. I didn't get in there and start crying and, and kicking and squirming like some little kids. You know how we tell our kids, don't you throw no tantrum, but look at how many tantrums you throw. Yeah. Grown folks throwing tantrums. Grown folks with masks on. <laughs> throwing tantrums. How they can breathe. Glory to God, but you lay that kicking in the floor because you don't want to do it God's way. Because you don't want to hear what God has to say. Because you don't want, amen, glory to God, your peace and quiet and that stuff. Some of you don't like company come because it messes up your quiet day. Wow. And God said, to come so you get to come to live it, set free and, and saved by the grace of God. I don't want nobody knocking on my door. Let me see who it is here. I ain't about to receive no company right now because I'm up in here relax. I'm watching my stories right now. Because <laughs> you're so comfortable with being you. You're so comfortable with doing your routine. You're so comfortable every day. Some of y'all are so routine, it is pathetic. Every day you do the same thing. If one thing get off, you upset. But God will interrupt your schedule just to get you in some water so that he can show you some things, so that he can bring you through, so he can show you glory to God, that going through will mature you. Going through, amen, glory to God, the challenges that you have to go through, my God, my God will grow you. And so you won't continue to do the same thing you have to hear. Some of y'all do the same thing, yes. You talk the same job. You make the same mistakes. You get wrestling for the same thing. Come on, people. Even a child knows when the mama says, do that again, I'm going to beat you tail. If your mama said, don't you do that no more, that child knows not to do that no more. But here we are, grown children of God. Amen. Glory to God. And God takes us through and God shows us stuff. Amen. Glory to God. But yet and still, we continue to do the same thing. Why? Because we're so relaxed in our mind and we're so relaxed in our spirit that we're not willing to change. Yeah. But you can't be in the kingdom without change. So this first amen, God promised us in verse 2, when you go through the deep waters, I'll be there. He said, I'll be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulties, he said, you will not drown people. And when you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burnt up. Amen. The flames will not come and consume you. This is an incredible promise that God makes to us. Amen. Incredible promise. Amen. And glory to God. Hallelujah. So people of God, no matter what you go through, God himself, amen, says that he will be there with you. No, you may not see him because he is the spirit, but you got to understand and know that he's there because he said that that he was there, and he's a man that he cannot lie, and neither will he repent. Because he said I'm there, he's there. Amen. But we don't believe it because we, we try to 
to to to to to judge God by the circumstances we're going through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, because this is so bad, God can't be that. God has been in better times in your time. That's right. Yeah, when he hung on that cross, that was a bad time, y'all. You hear what I'm saying? Glory to God. But he's been there through bad, worse times than what you're facing. No difficulties, amen, glory to God. Hallelujah will stop God from being with you, amen. Will stop God, hold God back, let me say that, from being where, amen, he needs to be with you. Most of the waters are a symbol of emotions or representative of the Holy Spirit. But God uses the word of water, of the word water or rivers as a visual insight into the troubles that you face. It's a visual insight. Now, each one of us got different kind of water today. Yeah. Huh? Your water ain't like my water. My water ain't like your water. But guess what? The God over the water is with us. Amen. And he changes not. Amen. And we got to realize, amen, that he's very careful to say that when you pass through the water. Because it is invertible that, in, and that, that he will, amen, glory to God, pass through the water of pain with you. The water of trouble and suffering, amen. The water of, of, of disappointment, amen, in your spiritual journey. Your spiritual journey is not going to be a bed of roses. Now, some of you came in because you just want God to relieve you of your troubles. But you didn't realize that when he relieved you and saved you, that he designed troubles that you had to go through too. Everybody say, get saved, everything be all right. Yeah, that's true. But it doesn't exempt you from going through what you got to go through to get to where God wants you. Yeah. It doesn't exempt you. It just, what it does is, it puts God in the midst with you. That's, right. that's what it does. It puts God there holding your hand. It puts God there reassuring you. It puts God there encouraging you. It puts God there, amen, believing in you. It puts God there with you, where if you didn't have God, Sister Angie, you'd be on your own, amen, passing through. And if you go through some fire right now, guarantee that weed is going to go up. You hear me? But you can have weed passing through the fire with God and the weed will stay in place. <laughs> weed will stay right there, it won't burn. God know y'all had it six weeks now, and the weed is still there, but you still you still have troubles, right? Yeah, because the weed didn't burn, and none of you burn, and none of you drown, because God is with you. Oh, that message that makes me happy. I say that makes me happy. You got to understand that we, each of us, have, have faced hardships, amen. And some of these experiences involve the hard task of healing, amen. It, 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 if we would get, amen, these healings that God tried to bring to us, a lot of us don't want to heal because we want to stay as we are. We even tell people, I don't want to change. I want to stay as I am. You've got to be healed in order to be changed. Not just healed from sickness. Uh, but that sin sickness and that other kind of uh, sickness that you gotta be, you gotta be healed from your own mind, you gotta be healed from your own thoughts, you gotta be healed from your own way, you gotta be healed from a whole lot of things. And the more you shred off these things that you picked up before you knew God, the closer you get to walking through and growing through what you gotta go through. Amen. Yeah, I, I can start right there. I just stop right there because I will because so long I will just come. And if need be, amen, glory to God, I'll come back next week and tell you some more because, see, it's supposed to encourage you to know, amen, glory to God, that whatever you're in, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, glory to God, that God is right there with you. He's not a God that will leave you or forsake you. He won't abandon you. He won't take you so far, amen, and he'll go back right to go the rest of the way. He'll go all the way to the dry side, to you. He'll go all the way, amen, where the fire quenches no more. He'll go all the way, amen, glory to God. He went all the way to the cross for you. So why do you think he wouldn't go through the water? What makes you think he wouldn't go through the fire? Why are you, amen, so, so, so whatever in your mind uh, that you think that God would take you to the edge of the river and push you in and turn back? No, so, buddy, he's going to get in the water with you. Yes, and you're going to be waving in the water. My God, hallelujah, with God on your side. You will be in the water swimming. Some of you can't even swim, but you're going to be swimming. Yeah. 